Hi all, this is Once and Future Gamer, and welcome to another Pokemon Challenge. Last week we took on Pokemon Fire Red with a single Numel, and that was absolutely brutal at the end. This week though, I doubt things are going to get any easier as we head to Gen 5 and we ask the question of whether or not I can beat Pokemon Black with just a single Swinub. So, Swinub, the word yikes springs to mind. We're dual ice and ground type, which is definitely unhelpful. We've got a 250 base stat total, which is the same as Bidoof, Hoppip, Marl, Spinarak and Smeargle. HP, attack and speed are our best stats, and that makes up three-fifths of our total. Our special stats are terrible. We resist poison, and we are immune to electric. The bad news is that we're weak to fighting, steel, fire, water and grass. We don't even resist ice, thanks to our ground typing. Move-wise, we do get a lot of ice moves near the start, but most of them use our special attack stat rather than our physical attack. Ice Shard could be pretty useful for the priority. And we do get Earthquake via level up, which is always good. Amnesia could be useful, as we saw last week. If this was Black and White 2, we'd get Flail as an extra move, but oh well, I'll survive. Via TM, we get some okay moves. Return, Rock Slide, Bulldoze, Dig, but not a lot of coverage otherwise. Predictions then. Where to start? We are weak to all three starter types, so the first gym could potentially be rough. Berg's Levani will probably trash us with Razor Leaf. Clay's Excadrill is part steel and will probably mess us up unless we have a good ground move by then. I am dreading the fight with Marshall at the Elite Four. Plus, there is the small matter of the rivals. Sharon and Bianca are probably going to have a super effective starter versus Swinub. I think N could be problematic. Probably more so if I was doing this in Pokemon White because he'd have Reshiram, but given the power of Zekrom, I don't think there'll be much in it. I'd be worried about Getsis 2 at the end. Just the rules then. In combat, I can only use Swinub. Other Pokemon will be needed for HMs but unable to fight. I only held items and Pokeballs in combat, but items are permitted outside of battle. Last of all, no glitches or exploits. If you do enjoy what you see, like, subscribe and ring the bell. This week's challenge, just like last week's, was suggested by Defiant on my Discord. There's a link in the description of the video to said Discord channel. I use the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Snivy with Swinub. I chose to replace Snivy so that we'd have a harder time in the first gym. Since whichever we chose to replace it with, the rivals would have something super effective versus us. It gives Bianca, Oshawott and Cheren Tepig. And speaking of rivals, we immediately have a fight with Bianca and the said Oshawott the moment we picked up our Swinub. I realise she's female. The first blow we take in battle in this run is a crit that wipes out half our HP. Seems about right. I hope that doesn't set the tone for it. We only have Odor Sleuth and Mudsport as alternative options to tackle, and so I crash into the Otter repeatedly, while it also tackles us repeatedly too, mixing in a few tail whips here and there. Eventually though, we take it down. Next is a fight with Sharon and his Tepig, who is tankier than Oshawott and takes more blows. Thankfully, from our point of view though, when we are getting weak, he starts to use tail whip attacks rather than tackles, which would probably have ended up finishing us off. It takes something like 5 tackles to bring it down. Again, yikes. Our swine up has the brave nature, so increased attack, which is nice, and lowered speed, which is not. I think that could have been worse if I am honest though. And for the second week in a row, we are running with the ability Oblivious. Given that the alternative was Snow Cloak, and the hidden ability was Thick Fat, I think all abilities are pretty situational, to be fair. I nickname our swine up Snuffles, seems appropriate, because I imagine them rooting around for mushrooms and truffles and stuff like that. Let's go grind. It's worth remembering that Patrat and Lillipup give attack EVs, which will be incredibly useful going forward, especially considering our nature. Actually, I mentioned Swinub snuffling around in the ground for roots and truffles and stuff like that. I'm sure there's a side mission in Pokemon Legends Arceus where that just happens. I grind up for a while and because we are in the slow experience game category, this is a pretty painful process. While I am doing the grind, I set about catching myself a few Lillipup because they could have the pickup ability and it is a great way to get free items. We do eventually get Powder Snow, and while it isn't hugely useful at the moment, we move on. The next major fight is the one with N, and it is the first of many rival fights in this game. He uses a Purloin in this fight, and it is faster than us. Well, we have got these stumpy little legs, so you'd think many things were. 
we immediately get hit with growl and a whole bunch of scratches while we try to fight back as best we can with powder snow. It does use our worst special attack stat, but with stab, it's probably the best move we get right now. Eventually, we take it down. I cannot wait to get Ice Shard. We have a rival fight with Bianca next before we can do much else. We've grinded up to level 14 by this point, EV training our attack. We just about can't one hit Lillipup and it lands Aaliyah before she heals it and we take it out with two more tackles. When Oshawott comes out next, a crit tackle one hits it and we take the victory. Next up is Sharon with another rival fight and in theory, this one could be easier as we have super effective moves on his team. Or at least I thought so until I realised he doesn't have his P-Dove yet. Versus Tepig, we employ a barrage of mud slaps which don't do much damage, but at least it is super effective and does lower accuracy. And it was better than Mud Sport as a move. An empty move slot is better than Mud Sport as a move, to be fair. It hits one ember, which does decent damage, plus eating a berry means that we can only four hit it. Versus Purloin, I hit a mud slap and then finish it off with a crit powder snow after taking a scratch. It's time for the first gym. The one where they pick the type that's super effective against your starter. I messed up a bit here. I thought Panseer would be the hardest for us to fight, but now that I think about it, it would probably have been Pampor. Anyway, we fight Chili. Lillipup is first and we hit a Powder Snow hoping for the freeze, but it does land a bite. I go for tackle attacks for the rest of the fight and eventually take it down after it goes for work up, which would have been scary. Next is Panseer and I keep mud slapping and hoping for the best. It is actually faster, which isn't good, especially when it works up first turn, but the repeated mud slaps take a toll and it never lands incinerate. Eventually, it does go down, despite his best efforts to heal it. There is another Cheren fight pretty much straight after, and his levels have massively increased. Versus Tepig, we keep on mud slapping. I think his Tepig is in a similar position to Snuffles at the moment, with being a physical attacker that unfortunately only has really special moves. Mud Slap doesn't do much, but it does blight his accuracy. Mind you, he never actually attacks. He just resorts to Defense Curl and Odor Sleuth moves. Very weird. Purloin is annoying because it used Assist and managed to pull an Ember out of the bag, but a flurry of tackles do in the end take it down. After a lot of training, I go to face N in Nacreen City. I trained a lot because I think the normal gym will probably be a difficult task at this point. It usually is. I did learn Mud Bomb, but I personally hate the accuracy of that move. It always feels like it'll miss at a vital moment. The end fight is smooth as P-Dove lands a quick attack but goes down to Powder Snow. Tim Pole could be dangerous, but two tackles take it down as it only lands a Growl in retaliation. Last is the Timber, and this is worrying, but Mud Bomb wipes out most of its health. We tank a low kick and finish it off. I make a try on Lenora at level 25 when I learn Icy Wind. Not ideal, but it is what we've got to work with. Plus, for a move that is 95% accurate, Icy Wind always feels like it misses every other turn to me. Between that and Mud Bomb, I figure we might have a chance. This does turn out to be wildly optimistic, as Snuffles faces off with the Herdier. We tried to land Mud Bombs to wreck its accuracy, but it is not the most accurate move itself, as demonstrated when one of them misses. Worse, it uses both Intimidate and Leer to wreck our stats, hitting a takedown that proves to be particularly brutal. We don't even knock the Herdier out, it proves to be too much for us, even with a 7 level advantage. Ok, I'll get a bit stronger and come back. With Gen 5 experience mechanics, this is pretty brutal, especially when, as mentioned before, Swineup is in the slow levelling category, which doesn't help. What isn't good when we're grinding is that most of the stuff to the west of Nacreen City can easily hit us with either fighting or water type moves which are super effective versus us. So it's a good thing there is a nurse in this area. I make another try on Lenora at level 26. Another level stronger, older and wiser. Now I do get pretty unlucky in this fight because we hit a rock smash straight off the bat that does just under half Herdia's health and gives it a defence drop. Now that does sound lucky right? What screws me is that take down crits and wipes out all but 5 of our hit points. And though we take it down after she heals it, Watchog just comes in and wipes us out without blinking. I make a third attempt at level 27. This gym is always horrible. Maybe we'll do it here. Maybe we'll have to level up to get Ice Shard. Versus Herdia, we hit a Rock Smash and get the defence drop before it drops our own defence with Leah. We hit a Rock Smash and take it down. That's one! 
versus Watchog. It fails with hypnosis and I hit an icy wind to wreck its speed. We outspeed at the second attempt and miss Mud Bomb because, of course, it's Mud Bomb. It has trash accuracy before it hits Retaliate for over half our health. A second Mud Bomb makes contact and crit, taking it to a sliver before it knocks us out with Retaliate. That miss was pretty crucial as it happens. We are getting closer, though. One thing I did notice was my Swine Hub did end up with Pokerus, which was pretty neat and hopefully makes the grind that little bit easier as we keep on going. At level 28, I make another stab with Ice Shard in our arsenal, and I even put an Orin Berry on to see if it makes a difference. We do manage to knock Herdier out. Ice Shard doesn't do much thanks to the Intimidate, but it will be handy going forward. Probably the worst thing that could happen is we get hit by two Leers from Herdier, and as a result, the Watchog absolutely murders us with Retaliate when it emerges from the Pokeball, one hitting us from full health. I make another stab shortly afterwards, but once again, end up getting taken out by Retaliate from Watchog after knocking out Herdia. I make another try at level 29. At least, I should sweep through the next bit of the game once this is out of the way. Theory right. Once again, in the next attempt, an unlucky crit screws me. We get Watchog to knock out range and then a crit Retaliate takes us down. Meh, mind you, I suppose she'd have probably healed anyway, so no great loss. Yet another try at level 30. Once again, I get Watchog to knock out range, only to be taken out with Retaliate. I'm getting truly sick of that move about now. Who would have thought that I'd be getting walled by Lenora so badly? I do finally do it at the next attempt though, and it's a huge sigh of relief. Herdia gets one hit by a single crit rock smash before the Watchog comes out. I try to mud bomb it to wreck its accuracy and hopefully stop the Retaliate, but it misses, of course, and only goes for Leah. A rock smash drops its defence and then it hits retaliate but we survive quite hardly before taking it out with the next rock smash. Let's move on. Seriously. It doesn't take long to get to Berg, the next gym leader in Castilia City. And strangely enough, I'm not too worried about his ace because in theory the Levani shouldn't be that bad given we have a priority super effective move and we've built up a level gap. The Whirlipede is a pain as we can't quite too hit it. The damage ranges exactly the same each time, which is really annoying, and we get tagged with a few struggle bugs. I'm not bothered about the special attack drop, but eventually, after he heals the Whirlipede twice, the Levani comes out and we can't quite one hit it with Ice Shard, doing about two thirds of its health. It then takes us out with a super effective Razor Leaf. Damn, that didn't quite go to plan. I do a few things around the city, get another level, and then make another try on Berg at level 34. We don't get damage during the Whirlipede fight this time. We too hit it with our Ice Shard, which is good. I don't dare go for Tackle in case of Poison Point activating. Unfortunately, we get hit with Screech, and when we can't one-hit Levani, the Razor Leaf tears us apart. The very next attempt, we get Mixed Fortunes. A crit versus Whirlipede, thanks to the Scope Lens, leaves it weak, and it can land a Struggle Bug before we take it down with two more Ice Shards. One down. When Levani comes out, we get another crit off Ice Shard, which ends it before the Dwebble is last. And I don't really have a good answer for it, so I just rock smash it. It seems apt for something living in a stone until it goes down. We get hit with a Sand Attack and a Smackdown in exchange. There is a Bianca fight next, which is probably not going to be fun. And I am right, as we have to face off against another intimidating Herdier, taking it down with a few rock smash attacks while it hits a takedown. We do do decent damage on Duot when that comes out, but Razor Shell just plain ends us. Oh dear. I make another attempt. We take down Herdia with rock smashes once again before I go for Mud Bomb versus Duot to try and wreck its accuracy. Thankfully, it never attacks this time, only going for Focus Energy and Water Spout. Two Mud Bombs bring it into healing range, but a crit Ice Shard Another crit on Rock Smash, take it down. Moona is a two hit with Ice Shard, hitting a side beam for decent damage, before Pansia is a one hit with Mud Bomb. And now Sharon. At least we are immune to Sandstorm damage when we fight him on the road to Nimbasa City. So, that's something. Sharon is actually easier than Bianca was. We one hit his P-Dove with Ice Shard, which is handy, before Pig Knight comes out. Uh oh, it just survives Mud Bomb, hits a Flame Wheel, for three quarters of our health before the berry takes him out of what might have been healing range and a combination of sandstorm and ice shard take it out. Ice shard one hits pan sage before the lipard 
Outlast ends up knocked out with Rock Smash. There's another end fight next and I've been exploring to get better moves before this fight and I utilise all of them here. His Sand Isle is up first and at least it doesn't have Intimidate. Ice Shard takes it out. Next is his Darumaka who goes down to Earthquake. A return is enough to take down his Scraggy before the Sigilyph is last and Rock Tomb does massive damage but it survives and puts up a Tailwind to increase its speed. I respond by sticking two fingers up at him and using Priority Ice Shard to end it. I figure we have probably got a good chance in the Electric Gym. The Priority Ice Shard should be good against the Leezer's Emolga. And what's going to suck for them is that they can't Volt Switch out. An Ice Shard is enough to down the first Emolga, which is quite cathartic. Zeb Striker is next and it outspeeds to hit a Flame Charge, but we tank it quite well and our super effective Earthquake proves to be fatal for it. The second Emolga goes down to Ice Shard. Easy, moving on. Next is a fight with Sharon, and we're actually not set up badly for fighting him, I realise. Lipard hits a fake out, but I can't really do much about that, and the next turn we take it down with Earthquake. Next is Pansage, who goes down to Ice Shard, before Pig Knight is next, and Earthquake takes it down. Last is Tranquil, we shoot it down with an Ice Shard. We have the 5th Gym Battle versus Clay up next, and while we should have an advantage being strong against ground, Clay's Excadrill worries me. Plus, the fact we'll be intimidated at some point is unsettling. Or not, his Croker Rock has Moxie in this game, not Intimidate, I'm thinking of the sequels. Anyway, we one hit said Croker Rock with Ice Shard, and then take Palpito down with an Earthquake. Excadrill is faster, but only goes for Home Claws, which proves to be fatal for it, as we down it with Earthquake in one hit. We move on to a Bianca fight next, and this will be harder, no doubt. Herdia is up first and immediately intimidates us, which doesn't bode well for the rest of the fight. It survives our Earthquake and then hits a takedown, duly ending itself with the recoil damage. Earthquake also does massive damage to Duot, but it survives and finishes us off with Water Pulse. Also, I have a mini heart attack as I start to wonder at this point if I actually did record the footage of the clay fight. Clearly, I did. We try again immediately after when I equip the soft sand to increase the power of Earthquake, but it's just not enough to tip the scales versus Duot as it one hits us from full health with Water Pulse. I make another try at level 44 and with our stat boost plus the soft sand, our Earthquake is just about potent enough to one hit both Herdia and then Duot afterwards. Pansia also goes down to a Soul Earthquake, but I was never worried about Pansia. Mushana gets tagged with Earthquake and survives to be healed, but she only goes for Lucky Chant and we take it out with Return and Earthquake. There is a fight with N at the end of Charge Stone Cave next. This one isn't too bad. I notice about N in this game, he makes random statements and asks you yes or no for what isn't necessarily a yes or no question. Anyway, I hit Boldo with Return to break the Sturdy, getting tagged with Power Gem before knocking it out with Earthquake. Ferroseed also goes down to Earthquake and that thing is like the anti-swine up so I am relieved. Clink is a one hit with Earthquake before the Joltic, Outlast, is taken down with a Return. Flying Gym next and if this were Black and White 2, I'd be worried because Skylar has a Skarmory in that game. She doesn't in this one though. Swanner could be dangerous. I wish I could get Rock Slide beforehand, but no dice on that. My lack of faith in Rock Tomb proves to be an eerily accurate comment as we one hit Swoobat with Ice Shard, but miss Rock Tomb on the Swanner and I get hit with Bubble Beam that lowers our speed and lets it finish us off with Aerial Ace. I go again. What do you know? The accuracy of Rock Tomb screws me once again. It got buffed in Gen 6, but it was still trash here. One does land and wipes out most of Swanner's health, and we get smashed with a Bubble Beam. I know she's going to heal, but our second Rock Tomb misses. We do huge damage with Return, but not enough to knock it out, and the second Bubble Beam ends us. Third attempt, we one hit Swoo back with Ice Shard, and this time I go for the more reliable Return on Swanner. Instead of Bubble Beam, it goes for Rackle Ring which, let's be honest, is a questionable choice. Having done three quarters of its health in damage, she doesn't heal and a second return takes it down. Unpheasant is last and we hit it with an Ice Shard before it fails with Leah and a second Ice Shard takes it down. Six badges down. Up next, there's a fight with Sharon, so we'll have to see how this one goes. I'm not concerned he's been the easier of the two rivals so far. 
Versus Unpheasant, it survives Ice Shard, but only goes for Taunt, and he doesn't bother healing it, so we take it down on the next blow. Simi Sage is a one hit with Ice Shard. When Pig Knight comes out, we take it down with a single Earthquake, before Lipard is last and duly gets wrecked the same way. Ice Gym next, and this one could be interesting. I do go and get Rock Slide before it though, to upgrade my moveset. It is stronger and much more reliable. After fighting through Twist Mountain, not easy due to the number of fighting and rock types there, we face Bryson. Anyway, we hit Vanillish with a Hardstone boosted Rock Slide to end it. Phew! Bear Tick actually survives Rock Slide and misses Swagger. I know a heal is coming, so I take it out with Return and Earthquake before Cryogonal outspeeds and hits an Aurora Beam that crits and does massive damage. But Rock Slide takes it down. Boom! Seven badges down. After a lot of story stuff, the next major fight is the final mandatory Bianca fight. This one is already not going to be fun, I can tell. I equip the soft sand on Snuffles and head to Fighter outside the Tube Line Bridge. I don't love the fact that it's raining for facing her Samurott, I know that. Anyway, we get intimidated by Stoutland before hitting it with an earthquake which it survives. Thankfully, it only goes to work up and we take it out at the second attempt. Simi series next and unfortunately it outspeeds us and hits flame burst for big damage. This is in the rain as well so fire moves are weakened. We take it out with Earthquake but the Samurott hits us with a priority Aqua Jet and takes us down instantly. Hmm, about the best thing maybe I can think of is to make a move change. Samurott is lethal but at least Aqua Jet is a physical move rather than special. Mind you, it does no revenge as well. Anyway, I teach Snuffles Reflect to hopefully mitigate some of the physical damage. It might not be enough, but since TMs are reusable in this game. Anyway, we hit Stoutland with an Earthquake while it works up and then we throw up Reflect. It uses Retaliate and of course it's a freaking critical hit which wipes out most of our health. We take it out at the second attempt, but Simisir just finishes us off with Flame Burst. Another try at level 62 and I hope that we outspeed Simisir this time because we've got no chance if we don't. I meant to put the Shell Bell back on for health recovery and completely forgot, and this is probably what cost me the fight. We tank the Retaliate from Stoutland and the Aqua Jet from Samurott quite well with Reflect up, but it's just too much punishment from them and we go crashing down again. And we're still not faster than Simisir. I lose the next attempt in the worst possible way. I beat Stoutland, Simisir only uses Leah, which isn't good, but we've got more health going into Samurott with our Reflect up. Samurott doesn't go for Aqua Jet and I can only assume the revenge is coming, but we get a fortunate crit and one hit it. The bad news is that we struggle against Mashana. It tanks our weakened blows, even using Defense Curl, which means we really can't hurt it. And it hits us like a frigging train with Psybeam attacks, eventually taking us down. I make several more tries to little avail before I hit upon the idea of going and getting the Evia Light. Taking damage is the problem, so I wonder if this might arrest that. It's worth a try. Once again, we simply take too much damage across the first three Pokemon, and Mashana can finish us off with a Psybeam attack. I try using Rock Slide to flinch the Mashana to little avail as we don't get the effect. It takes many attempts, but eventually I get a run where we hit Stoutland with Earthquake while it goes to work up. We put the Reflect up and shrug off a Retaliate. Simisir goes for Leah rather than Flame Burst and it's not ideal but we one hit it with Earthquake. Samurott hits an Aqua Jet for decent damage before we do massive damage with Earthquake. We then hit another to knock it out. Thankfully I think it went for revenge. Versus Mashana, the first hit from Rock Slide is a crit which puts it on red health but I can't pull that trick again as it goes for Lucky Chant and she heals. Two more rock slides come in to put her below half health and crucially she misses Hypnosis before we finish it with Earthquake. Thank goodness that one's done. Versus Drayden in the Dragon Gym we should have an advantage in theory. Some of his Pokemon are pretty bulky though. I have a strategy. I put the Never Melt Ice on Snuffles and cross my fingers that will be enough. The Fracture isn't a problem we one hit it with our boosted Ice Shard. When Druddigon comes out though, it's strong enough to survive Ice Shard on red health and hits us with a Night Slash that wipes out nearly half our health. He then heals it and we hit it hard with Ice Shard again. He heals it again, we hit it hard with Ice Shard again to put it on red health for the third time before finally taking it down. Haxorus survives Ice Shard on red health and hits a Dragon Tail that puts us in red health. He wasted his Hyper Potions on Druddigon though and a second Ice Shard takes it down. 
Gym challenge done. Before we can head to the Pokemon League and Victory Road, we've got the final mandatory Cherim fight. I put the expert belt on Snuffles just to boost the power of super effective moves since we have them for free of his four Pokemon. Unpheasant takes massive damage from Ice Shard and chooses to charge up Razor Wind, which is perhaps not the best decision on his part. We take it out with a second Ice Shard. Embor is a one hit with Earthquake before the Simi Sage comes out next. We hit it with an Ice Shard to take it out. Last is Lipard. We get hit with a Slash from it which wipes out nearly half our health, but Earthquake takes it down. That was straightforward. After getting my ass kicked around Victory Road for a bit, I finally make it to the Pokemon League, and here are our stats as we stand outside there. The attack is okay. Keep in mind, that stat is with a beneficial nature. Speed isn't too bad for a decreased nature. Everything else, including the special defence, is so, 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 so bad. If you think I can do this at this level, then comment away now. There's two fights that will be hard, I reckon. Marshall, the fighting type trainer, and Caitlin, the psychic trainer. One deals super effective damage to us, the other is probably going to caramelise us with that special defence stat we have. We make a first try on Caitlyn and hit her Reuniclus with a soft sand boosted earthquake that does good damage. Unfortunately, it hits a crit energy ball that one hits us from full health when we are 22 levels higher. So, that just happened. I might as well try the other Elite Four members and see what we can do. We go after Ghost Trainer Chantal and do okay for a first attempt. Taking down a Kerfagrigus with Rock Slide and Earthquake, getting hit by a Shadow Ball in exchange. Plus, we take a Chandelure down with Earthquake. The Jellicent, though, survives Earthquake on a sliver of health and knocks us out with Brine. Not good. Righto then, I guess I don't really have a choice. I've got to go and grind and this will be absolutely torturous given the Gen 5 experience mechanics. I suppose the only thing that is a bright spot on the horizon is that at least the stronger we get, we might be able to grind upon the Elite Four instead of wild Pokemon 20 to 30 levels weaker than us in Victory Road. At least the Durant aren't too bad to grind upon. We can one hit them with Earthquake and we do get good experience for knocking them out. Though the Boldor are a massive pain due to their sturdy ability, often requiring me to use Rock Slide and hope for the flinch. This spot in Victory Road seems as good a place as any because at least there's a doctor nearby to heal my wounds. Plus, with the Lillipup pickup team I've got going on, it gives them a chance to net me some items. I'm hoping like mad for rare candies. Anything to save us from a torturous higher level grind. Sometimes we get Excadrill appearing too, which are pretty decent to level upon. While I'm doing this, I might as well tell you about what's going on on the channel. I'm nearly at the end of the Resident Evil 4 playthrough and still in the process of working out which Resident Evil game I do next. It will either be Zero, Revelations 2 or it might be one of the remakes. Other than that, I'm still knocking through Let's Go Pikachu and having fun with that. I've been putting together some episodes of Mystery Dungeon DX 2 but none of those have been uploaded at the time of recording. I've still not given up on Pokemon Jade either. Just want to add a general welcome to anyone new to the channel and if you wandered in then stick around take a load off. Check out what's going on down below. Jedi Fallen Order is going on okay too. As always, all playlists are linked in the description below. Anyway, what's upcoming challenge wise? Next week's challenge will sure to be an interesting one as we take on Pokemon Silver with a single Leddy Bar. Yikes. While I am levelling though, a strategy begins to form in my mind and I wonder if there's an item I can get to make things easier. And Bulbapedia, yeah. It tells me that in this game, I can't increase my flinch chances on Rock Slide by using a King's Rock. Well, nuts. That both sucks and blows. I thought I'd hit upon something there. Level 76 then, and I head back into the Elite Four. We did okay on Chantal last time. Let's see if we can do something here. Yeah, it doesn't take me long to lose. We land a Rock Slide on Confragrigus. I can never remember that thing's name right, and writing it and pronouncing it is luck over judgement. We don't get the flinch and it burns us with Will-O-Wisp. Yeah, we're not winning now. A Shadow Ball lowers our defence and it's just a case of when we go down rather than if. Can we beat Grimsley? Well, the fact that he starts out with a fighting type is somewhat worrying. When we do against him, the Scrafty comes out and narrowly survives Earthquake, which isn't good. The fact it hits a Sand Attack is worse. Ice Shard and Earthquake do take it out though. Crocodile coming out next is pretty bad, especially as we get intimidated. Worse, we miss the Ice Shard. And though the second one lands, two earthquakes take us out. Let's make another stab at Caitlyn and see if we have any fortune now that we're at level 79. This does go better, but we are still short of the victory. Reuniclus just about survives Earthquake and fires a Focus Blast wide of the mark before she heals it. 
Ice Shard and Earthquake take it out. Next is Sigilith, who is a one hit with Rock Slide. Mashana survives Earthquake and hits Psychic for massive damage, but she heals it, and just as with Reuniclus before it, Ice Shard and Earthquake take it down. For Gothitelle, it survives Earthquake and ends us with a Shadow Ball. That wasn't too bad, but still not good enough. Level 80, I make another go at Chantal, and holy crap! Versus Cofagrigus, we hit a Rock Slide for a decent chunk of its health, and it lamps us with a Shadow Ball for exactly half our health. Earthquake finishes it off. And speaking of lamps, Chandelure is next, and Earthquake one hits it. How does Chandelure not have Levitate? It's floating above the frigging ground. Jellicent is one hit with Earthquake before Go Lurk is last, and I blast it with Ice Shard for massive damage. It hits Earthquake and does decent damage, but we do shrug it off. She heals it twice, a desperate gambit to keep the ghost alive. Is alive the right word? Anyway, we take it down eventually, and that's one down. I go after Grimsley next to see if we are more fortunate at this level, and nope. Two Brick Breaks from his Scrafty ends Snuffles as a threat as it survives Rock Slide and Earthquake. Unfortunately, I don't get the flinch with the first move and I don't get the knockout with the second one. I might make a try on Marshall and see how we do. Badly, might be my guess. Actually, all jokes aside, we do better than expected. Putting a reflect up against Fro helps us somewhat, though getting hit by two Bulldoze attacks definitely doesn't help us at all. We take it down eventually with Ice Shard and Earthquake, but it's not helped by him healing. When Conkelda comes out next, we get a flinch off Rock Slide before putting our Reflect back up. But despite Earthquake taking it to the brink, two Hammer Arms do finish us off. Oh dear. We have a try on Caitlyn next, and this one actually goes really well. So, we hit the Reuniclus with Rock Slide. It doesn't make it flinch, but we do get a crit, which is awesome. It then misses Focus Blast as we go for Ice Shard. She heals it twice while we hammer it with our priority ice attacks. Eventually, we take it down for the count. We do get a stupid amount of crits through this battle. Rock Slide is enough to take down Sigilith. Do you ever reckon that's related to the unknown when you look at the face? Before, we hit Mashana with Rock Slide, but it counters with Psychic on us for massive damage before we finish it off. When Gothitelle comes out, we land a Rock Slide for the flinch and then finish it off with Earthquake. Two down. Grimsley again then. We hit Scrafty with Rock Slide and don't get the flinch, but, and this is vital, it goes to Brick Break rather than Sand Attack. That's awesome. We take it out with Earthquake despite taking big damage. Next is Crocodile, who we can hit for big damage with Ice Shard before it pounds us with an Earthquake of its own. Oh man, don't use our tactics against us, but the second Ice Shard ends it. When Bi Shark comes out, I'm relieved because we're weak. We can one hit it with a single Earthquake before Lipard is last. It goes for Fake Out, and this is why I'm glad we got some health recovery off Bi Sharp, because I don't fancy facing a Fake Out on Red Health. Earthquake ends it. Boom! Free down. It doesn't solve my Marshall problem though. I make a dozen attempts on him, and although there's ones where I can take down Fro and Conkelda, the Mien Shout is often too much right at the end. So, I guess we try and power level on the rest of the Elite Four then. Hit harder, get hit softer. Mind you, Earthquake is going to be our best option potentially versus Marshall, and there's one item I wonder about. That item is the Metronome, and unfortunately, it's not until post-game in black and white. Drat. What I do learn after a few more attempts is the team with Soft Sand boosting our Earthquake's power, we are just a little off one hitting throw, which would make things easier. Just a little too weak. We one hit throw, we don't get hit with Bulldoze, which means maybe we get the first hit in on Mien Shao. Sork will be a problem at the end, we'll probably have to take at least one blow due to it having sturdy. At level 89, I make another try for Marshall, the system of levelling always been the same. Hit Chantal, then Caitlyn, then Grimsley, and finally make the try to see if we can beat Marshall. If I lose, then I do it again. It's a good job I took return off my swine up because being used as a punching bag probably isn't doing wonders for her happiness. Anyway, we make this try on Marshall and manage to one-hit throw with Soft Sand Boosted Earthquake. That is massive. Versus Conkelda, we land a flinch with Rock Slide and then take it down with Earthquake. This is freaking it! Mien Shao, we outspeed and one hit with Earthquake before Sork comes out and we fling a Rock Slide at it. Unfortunately, we don't get the flinch, but it only goes to Karate Chop and we can finish it with Earthquake. That was horrific. Two fights left then, and the first one is versus N. I'm actually not worried about his dragon, but I can see his Caracosta being awkward. During the grind-up for this challenge, 
I watched MDB do the gold with a single Ratata challenge, and there is something quite sobering when you realise that Swineup is actually weaker base stat total wise than the Kanto Regional Rodent. The end fight is pretty bad in the sense that when it comes to Reshiram vs Zekrom, I do the usual trick of hooking Pokeballs at it until it knocks us out. Remember, I am allowed to use Pokeballs in battle, but this takes such a long time, and I might as well take the time to thank you for sticking with me up until this point, while Reshiram slowly gets beaten to a pulp. When it goes down, Snuffles comes in and we one-hit Zekrom with Earthquake. Next is Kling Clang, but I'm not convinced it's anything other than Zoroark. And boom, what do you know? Earthquake both one hits it and proves my point. I know Steel is super effective against Ice, but you have got to be pretty reckless to switch a Steel type into an Earthquake. Next is Caracosta, and I'm worried. We don't get a flinch from Rock Slide, however, we do survive its waterfall attack, but before we can finish it off, it takes us out with Aqua Jet. Oh dear. Maybe the Eevee Light will be more useful than Shell Bell. Hard to say. Anyway, it becomes irrelevant in the rematch with him. I get the one bit of fortune I need in this fight. It starts the same, Zekrom goes down to Earthquake, and when it comes out next, the Zoroark is ended in the same fashion. Versus Caracosta, I get the flinch off Rock Slide, and Julie take it down with Earthquake. Vanillux is taken down with a single Earthquake, though that did worry me about whether it would be a one hit or not. When the real Kling Clang please stands up, a super effective Earthquake takes it down, before we one hit the Archeops outlast with Ice Shard. That went incredibly well. One final fight left then, and I wonder how we'll do with Getsis. Some worries are the Cathagrigus, the Seismitoad, and the Hydreigon, but hopefully we can do this. I've got a lot of rare candy if we can't, so we'll see. This goes badly, right from the off. We do end Cathagrigus with a Rock Slide, making it flinch, and an Earthquake, but it does no Toxic, so it can be a fight ender all on its own. Hydreigon, I tried to hit with Rock Slide, but it does outspeed us and hits a Crit Focus Blast to take us down in one hit. I don't even know if the crit was necessary there. A second attempt goes massively better. We miss Rock Slide on Cathagrigus, but it fills with Toxic before we get the flinch from Rock Slide and take it out with Earthquake. Ice Shard does massive damage to Hydreigon, thankfully, and it misses Focus Blast, even more thankfully. A second Ice Shard takes it out. Seismitoad just about survives Earthquake, then goes for Rain Dance, gets his heals it, and we take it out with Ice Shard and Earthquake. I thought I'd screwed up there. If it had had Swift Swim, we'd have probably lost. Electros is a two hit with Rock Slide, one of them being a flinch, before he goes into Bufalance. We do miss Rock Slide on the big bad ball, and we get hit with Head Smash for massive damage. He just survives Earthquake, and then takes us down with a second attack. He does go down too, but the damage is done. That miss with Rock Slide cost us bad there. A few more attempts fail due to Toxic. It cannot be done if we get hit with that move, not in a single Pokemon run. Even if you do one hit everything on his team, you will still go down for a 5 Pokemon in. Trust me, I have experience of this. Eventually, I decide enough is enough and I boost my level up to max, just to end this lunatic with extreme prejudice. And here are our stats at level 100. Attack is good, everything else is pretty meh. I guess if we can't do it here then, well, no doubt, we have to. No choice about it. Also, the light screen stuff. I did a bunch of efforts where Cofagrigus used Protect at the start, so I thought I might as well light screen for the High Dragon, but it immediately stopped using that strategy and tried to poison us off the bat, so that's usually the way this stuff goes. Anywho, we get a few more failed runs, and then finally, we meet one where a lot of stuff goes to plan. First Cofagrigus, we take it down with Rock Slide and Earthquake, without getting poisoned, which is always positive because we lost a lot of efforts to this thing. Next is Hydreigon, and we hit a Rock Slide, but don't get the flinch. Still, it misses Focus Blast, and we down it with our Ice Shard. Next is Seismitoad, and we can one-hit it with Earthquake, so that's a relief. Electros, once again, is a two-hit with Rock Slide, as we get the flinch to stop it blasting us with Flamethrower. Versus Bufalont, we hit the Earthquake, and it survives, but goes to Head Smash, which we tank quite well, and the recoil damage knocks it out. Last is Bisharp, and Earthquake takes it down. That gets this done, and I breathe a huge sigh of relief because I'm considering that to be the end of this run. We listen to when and gets this go on and on and on and on, and there's a whole debate about right and wrong, truth and ideals, care and compassion before the credits roll. No entry in the Hall of Fame this time. This is the end. I am just going to go and lie down for a bit now. Now, nah, anyway, that was brutal towards the end. Elite Four, N, gets this. I can't believe how long this took. Nearly a week and a half to complete this challenge. 
It's a good job the previous one happened while I was on holiday, otherwise I doubt I would have done this in time. Thanks for joining me for this run. As previously stated, next week we're heading back to Gen 2 to answer the question of whether or not I can beat Pokemon Silver with a single Leddy Bat. We have got back-to-back -back bug type runs coming up, so join us for those. If you have any ideas for future challenges, then drop them in the comments section below. Swing by my Twitter to tell me there, or leap on my Discord where there's a Pokemon challenge section. If you have enjoyed what you've seen, then hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, ring the bell, and you get to stay in the loop. What's new with me? Summer is here, and I wait for news of the future. More ahead. Nothing that I should really discuss right now. We've all been here on this video long enough, so I guess I'm going to sign off. As always, this has been Once a Future Gamer, taking on Pokemon Black with just a single swine up. Thank you so very much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Take care, folks. Have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye now.